Friend, many times I have people who want me to explain certain verses in the Bible that causes a little trouble with understanding how a man can be saved forever because there's verses that seems to say that if you do this, then that's a sign you're not really saved. For example, in the book of 1 John in chapter 3, it makes this statement. In verse 15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So if you're saved and you hate, and hate is murdering somebody, he says you know that he doesn't have eternal life. So after you trusted the Lord, didn't God give you eternal life that very moment? And then you wind up hating somebody? Well, if you hate somebody down the road, does that mean that you must not really be saved? Or did you lose your salvation? Interesting, isn't it? But I believe there's a simple explanation. It also kind of goes along with the verses found over there in the book of Galatians in chapter 5. And this is what it says in verse 21. As I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what things? Well, he kind of gives us an idea down through here in verse 19 and 20. And this is what he says. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, and reveling, and such like. Of which he said, I told you before, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Whew. It don't look like anybody's going to make it. But now let me explain it to you. It says the works of the flesh. Look up here, let me show you. This is our first birth. Flesh birth. Old sinful nature. Because we have a sinful nature, we do all these bad things. Bad fruit. Bad root. So this is why you and I need to trust Christ as our Savior. So once you trust Christ as your Savior, He gives you a new birth. This was born of God. Divine nature. No sinful nature. Cannot sin. This one can't sin. This one can't do anything right. So they're contrary to each other. And there's a battle in your Christian life. You see, when you trusted Christ, God didn't change the flesh. He gave you a new birth. Born of the Spirit. And that's why he makes the statement here in verse 16. This I say then. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, look up here. Walk in the Spirit. That means let the new birth control your life. The Holy Spirit lives within you, and if you walk in the Spirit, which means simply walking in obedience to the Word of God, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you see, a Christian still has the flesh, still has a sinful nature, and he's still capable of everything in the book. That's why he says the works of the flesh are these, and they're manifested. These are the ones, the flesh birth, these are not going to heaven. These cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why he says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The only one that inherit the kingdom of God are those who have the new birth. And once you're a child of God, you have eternal life, so you inherit the kingdom of God, God's children. So all of God's children will go to heaven. But God says to his children, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so that's why he makes a statement in chapter 5 of the book of Galatians in verse 22. He says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. See, there's a law against walking in the flesh, but there is no law against walking in the Spirit. And if you want the fruit of the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And that's why he says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You walk in the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh. You walk in the Spirit, and you're going to have love and joy and peace. I hope that explains that verse for you. Thank you, and God bless, friend.